Welcome to the Mango Effect podcast, where every week we talk about the path to living a limitless life and having the freedom to do it your way. No topics are off limits. We get into the practical, the hypothetical, and the downright juicy stuff. I'm Mindy Rosser, your host and lifestyle cheerleader, and I'm here today to talk about why I love growing older. And you may say, Mindy, you're not old enough to say this. But I am in my mid-30s, so I feel like I can. I'm getting closer to 40, (laughs) so I feel like I can talk about getting older a little bit. So why is it that modern culture is so obsessed with looking and acting younger? We're Botoxing, tightening, lightening, getting all sorts of sketchy anti-aging treatments to avoid what is now the inevitable. Unless you're a transhumanist who is planning to implant your consciousness into some inorganic machine at some point, which I think would be rad and pretty cool. So I'm not opposed to that. But I believe that growing older can become almost a magical experience where we are endowed with wisdom we could not get any other way. So why are we telling it to F off? <laughs> so you're like, maybe that was a little bit strong. Yeah, it is a little bit strong. I was thinking about it over the past few weeks. Well, this is a topic that always comes up for me because we're always blasted with these images. I don't know about you, but you hop into Instagram, you hop into Facebook, you hop into TikTok, and it's like all these young people or people that want to be young that are in your face. Look at me. I'm so pretty. I'm so smart. Um, let me sell you this. Let me shake and wiggle here and there. It's like, okay, that's great and all. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to bash it, whatever. But I feel like the subliminal messages that we are taught as a culture is that you are as valuable as you are young and smart and competent. And if you are not uh, sticking with that approach, if you are not valuing those things, if you have some wrinkles, if you don't have a perfectly shaped nose and perfectly high cheekbones and look like a movie star, then you should not be on social media. You should not have a business like you have to look a certain way. You have to be a certain age, for God's sake, to actually be successful in the mind's eye of our society. And I think it's so ridiculous. Like, who the heck came up with all of these rules and regulations? But still, we fall prey to this myth of beauty and like, never growing old. I mean, there are so many myths, if you can think about them, where it's like people that never age. I mean, there are movies made about it, too. And I fell prey to this beauty myth, too, growing up. I... (laughs) confession time. That's what Mindy does on the show. So confession time. When I was in high school, I remember there was like a group of us like sitting in class and they were talking about who the prettiest girl was in school. And my name got brought up along with this other girl and it was always me and her. They're like, yeah, those are the two prettiest girls in high school right now. And in my mind, in that moment, I was like, yeah, I have achieved something like in my mind. I thought it was the best thing ever. And I was always trying to attain that prettiness and being valued in other people's eyes. A lot of it also did have to do with how I grew up, which unfortunately, I grew up in a patriarchal society where I was taught that a woman's worth was wrapped up in how beautiful her husband or future husband perceived her to be. I mean, I even chose the middle name Esther, which if any of you grew up in a religious environment, you may know the story of Esther because she was super pretty and powerful. (laughs) You know, it was really interesting, like growing up in that environment and just seeing how much of that impacted me, even though I was in like a really strict, crazy, uber Christian, semi cult like school and environment, I still was influenced by this whole beauty myth. I mean, we even had like these women's conferences where a session was dedicated to trying to make yourself look desirable for your husband. (laughs) You know, that was in like a super Christian, you know, yeah, interesting, right? So it has permeated our society and our culture. And I feel like especially for women, if fellow men, if you're listening to this, maybe you are feeling this, I think from a different perspective, I cannot share from that perspective. But sharing from a woman's perspective, I feel like there have been so many things that I have done, so many decisions I have made, things that I have done to my body that I would not have done. Looking back in time, like if I would have felt strong and empowered and not trapped in this whole beauty myth thing, I would not have competed in figure competitions. I would not have destroyed my metabolism trying to diet down and be super skinny. I would not have gone through anorexia as a teenager, which was really, really challenging to get out of. I would not have undergone breast augmentation in my 20s because I thought I didn't have the right proportions to compete in these ridiculous figure competitions. But still, these things seem to impact 
our lives. And it is something that we don't talk about. And when we do talk about it, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. You know, body acceptance. So we focus on the body acceptance when really it's about being comfortable and really embracing the human body as it evolves. And over time, I'm sorry, our skin is not going to get tighter without surgical assistance are you know this is just not going to happen so i think there has to be this type of acceptance that's not just necessarily body acceptance per se but also being okay with growing older and the beauty that comes with that and it's funny like i was looking up some stats and the global anti-aging market size according to precedence research is expected to be worth around us dollars 119.6 billion by 2030 I think right now it's like 49 billion or something right around there. So I think that's crazy and insane. But I think it's this obsession that we have with staying young, with staying beautiful, with with fitting these molds. And the younger we can keep ourselves, like we look at movie stars and such and how many treatments they have to go through when it's like, why can't we just all get older and be okay with it and like age gracefully? Like, what can we do on that front? There are some friends of ours that are about the same age as um, my partner and I. And when I met my partner, uh, let's see, it was about 10. Yeah, it's like 10 and a half years ago. Um, This guy was meeting his wife and they were getting married right around the same time we were hooking up too. And they are so funny because like we follow them on social media and uh, will not disclose who they are. But it is really funny because I feel like They are the same people that they were 10 years ago. The stuff that they talk about is the same. And I think as we get older, you know, there's certain things that shift over time. Like in our 20s, at least for me, I'm not sure about you, but a lot of people I've talked with, it's like in our 20s, we're trying to figure ourselves out. We're trying to get, you know, that we're trying to work through the whole body acceptance. Where do I fit into this world? We're trying to get valid. A lot of times we're trying to get validation that we are okay. I'm trying to get comfortable with our bodies. And they're still talking about these things like that we talked about in our 20s, like hitting, getting close to 40, right? And I think it's interesting to me that some people like just stay in a certain mindset and don't allow the aging and wisdom process to take over and evolve as they grow older. And I have noticed a shift over time for me and just what matters to me over time. And I think it also is the types of things that I value and that I admire. It's not the young people or people that can you know, get a facelift when they get too many wrinkles. Like, ah, okay, whatever. If that's what you want to do, go for it. But I think the danger behind that is feeling a pressure or an underlying need to meet society's expectations or to meet what we think other people are looking for from us. Like if we're trying to do an Instagram, for example, I work with a lot of business leaders and some of them are really uncomfortable on camera. And so they're like, oh, I'll throw these filters and stuff. I'll try to get rid of my wrinkles here. Like this is a touch up makeup, you know, makes me look better than I really am. I'm like, well, how authentic is that? You know, where is that line there? And why do we feel that we have to be anyone but ourselves? I think that's really what it comes down to for me. Like we're going to change over time. Every single year we're getting wiser. We're getting older. We're learning more. And if we are living our lives with intention, which is what we talk about on this show, if we are making good decisions, then every single year is building on the one before. So every single year we should be getting better with time. So in my mind, I think of it like for those of you who are wine drinkers, I am not, but and wine gets better with age, right? So I think the same happens to us as we get older, but only if we allow it to. So it can either get better with age or it can just completely spoil, you know? So it's like that, that metaphor there. It's like, yeah, it could be a disgusting drink 20 years from now, or it could just get better with age because as we grow, as we learn, we incorporate those things. It's almost like the flavors are having time to percolate the values that we really, really treasure that we put time and energy into are allowed to grow and to really impact us from the inside out. And that shows on our faces. Something that has come up for me living in Hawaii as well. It's a different culture here. If you have never lived here, it is very different from the mainland. So you think, oh, it's probably like California. It is not. Uh, so it is a very different culture. And it's, it's, I love the island culture here. And there's a lot of influence from um, the people that were here before, you know, the United States kind of took over and turned it into a state. Uh, so here, elders are respected. It is 
very, very neat to see. Uh, and I have noticed a shift, too, in my perception of elders. And I never used that word much before moving here. I would use words like elderly, but not your elders. And here there is a lot of respect for people who have age, for people who have wisdom, uh, for people who are respected in the community, and they are not hiding from society. Like I feel like on the mainland, a lot of times, I mean, I worked inside of a number of nursing homes and I, in my early, early early 20s um, in nursing homes. I was like a fitness instructor at a retirement village. And so I saw how society and how these people's children were trying to get rid of them. And it was like really interesting and fascinating to me to come here to the island. And you don't really see that. I mean, obviously, they're going to be nursing homes and facilities for people who need that additional support. But in general, the older population here they are so vibrant, especially where I live on the North Shore. When we go surfing, like say, for example, I want to do a morning surf, not quite dawn patrol, which is for the really early birds, uh, but I like the mornings, like, you know, 8.30-ish, maybe 8 o'clock. And when you go out at that time, you're going to run into all of the elders because that is kind of like their time to go surf. And it is really special to see people who have been surfing for 40, 50 years out there in the lineup surfing alongside, you know, us you know, 20, 30 somethings. And just the respect and the admiration I have for them, they move so well. I look at them like, wow, okay, she is like 85 years old and she is like catching head high waves and surfing, you know, she's going up and down the wave. Like, how epic is that? Uh, and to me, that is what it's about. It's about growing older and it's about being in supportive communities. And how can we, instead of looking towards aging, like when I see people out in the surf, you know, all of these elders that I see versus what I used to see on the mainland when I was working in nursing homes, it's like a stark contrast. I see vibrant 85 year olds that are active outside, enjoying life, hanging on the beach with their kids and grandkids, which is so, so cool. And I want to be one of those people. I don't care if I have wrinkles. Yeah, I'm going to be in the sun. I'm going to get wrinkly. There, there's no way around that being on an island and I can plaster myself with sunscreen, but the wrinkles are still going to happen. But how can I be more vibrant? As I get older. So that is a question I'm always thinking about when it comes to aging, when I feel that pressure, when I look at myself in, on the camera because I have to do videos for my business. So I'm always looking at myself and you feel like, I don't know if you've done this. If you make videos, you probably feel that, oh, I have to look at myself. You see like a wrinkle here. You see like an aging line here, a smile line, like, oh, I can see it in my eyes now. And instead of just analyzing ourselves in that way, why can we not? Embrace ourselves saying, yeah, I'm getting older. I'm getting so much more smart. Like I am learning. I'm learning so much about myself. I'm learning how I can better support the community. I'm learning more about my place in the world. I'm learning all of these amazing things and watching my life come together right before my eyes. And I am here and present to enjoy it instead of obsessing what I was looking like when I was 20. I actually like the way I look better now than I did when I was 20. It's funny. I look at pictures. I'm like, I'll take 35 any day over that. You know, I think it's just because you get comfortable in your body. And I think it does come with that body acceptance, but it also comes with kind of unplugging from the matrix of society and what they tell us is appropriate and what we should look like and comparing ourselves to that. Like being here on an island, it's great because I feel like I can completely unplug except for my business stuff because I'm seeing a lot of stuff on the Instagrams. But it's not the same as when I lived in California. Now, when I lived in California, it was so different. Like everybody had you know, faceless and you, you could tell everybody had work done <laughs> in multiple places, multiple body parts. It was just a common thing. And it, it was very shocking for me when I first moved there in my, let's see, mid 20s, um, because I came from like very conservative Midwest originally. And then living up and down in California and kind of seeing that moving back to the Midwest and now moving to Hawaii, it's like, wow, so many different cultures and the way that we perceive things and what we value are different. So I think just along that line, what type of environment are you in? If you are living in a place where you are surrounded by people who look like, you know, they're going to the beautician, you know, multiple times per week to get, you know, treatments and stuff, and that's not really your scene, is that the right place for you? You know, it's really thinking about your environment from that perspective and who are you surrounding yourselves with? Are you surrounding yourself with people that are themselves and don't feel like they have to put on a facade or try to fit somebody else's, 
you know, representation of what they should look like. You know, I think so much emphasis is placed on the external that we overlook the internal, which is really what it's all about. It's about really being comfortable on the inside. And when we stop obsessing over how we look and how society tells us we are supposed to look and how our bodies are supposed to feel, we are free to embody the human that we are and who we are meant to become. And nobody, nobody is going to care what we look like. By the time we turn 89, 99, for those of you who are going to be, you know, make it to centenarians, nobody's going to give a care by that point. But what will matter is, did you live a full life? Did you impact the people that were a part of your sphere? And so I do feel like there's a good balance here, too. It's not that I'm saying, oh, don't care about your body. It doesn't matter. Eat what you want. You know, put on 50 pounds. Don't exercise. No, no, no. I'm definitely into exercise. So I think it's about investing in anti-aging and wellness practices that do actually enhance our health. And I think that's the key. Are you doing it for health reasons or are you doing it because, you know, somebody looks a certain way or it's an external or you feel that you have to, like you're being pressured into it? A lot of times it's the motivation behind the practice that makes the difference. And when we pay attention to why we are motivated to do that, that's when we go, oh, oh, you know, for example, in my case, if I truly wanted to have a breast augmentation because that was something that I truly deep down really, really wanted to have and experience, then that's fine. You know, go have that done. That is completely fine. More power to you, Mindy. But doing it with the motivation that I had at the time, which was I need to look good on a stage, uh, I, I feel like I, my body proportions aren't what society is telling me I need to have, then I should just, you know, get this fixed. You know, so there's a really big difference. It's like one person is choosing it from a place of empowerment. The other person, which was me at the time, was choosing it from a place of I'm not enough. And so think about that. When you are looking at things like this, you know, it may have the same outcome, but the motivation behind it is really what we're paying attention to here. And so what is your motivation for doing certain things in your life? And this can expand beyond how we look. This can expand to a lot of other areas. But finding a balance and taking care of ourselves on all levels, that does lead to aging gracefully. And yes, we are all going to face health challenges at some point. Nobody is born with like perfect genetics and is going to have no health problems at probably like 0.00001% of people, which probably is not us. So we are going to have to deal with challenges along the way, but how are we going to handle them? You know, like how can we make that process better? And there was something that I learned this week about myself, which was kind of wild. And for those of you who have gone through the process of figuring out your Enneagram, if you're curious, the Enneagram is like nine different personality types and everybody falls into one of those nine personality types. And so for the longest time, um, like they're all by number. So you have like the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, for the longest time, I thought I was a three. <laughs> and I just, but I couldn't resonate with it. Like there was something about it that just drove me bananas. And a three is somebody who is actually very image conscious, wants to keep up with the Joneses, um, is, is very magnetic, very charismatic, really good on stage, really great with people and kind of understanding emotions. And for a long time, I felt like I had been playing the role of the three. And so I felt that I had almost become a three and I couldn't distinguish the motivations behind why I was doing what I was doing. And that was because I was acting like a three because that's what my business requires. And so I put on the three and almost internalized that. And I think so many times we do that with things in our life. We don't, we can't even distinguish what we truly want or de desire and what society tells us we should want. And when we can make that distinction, again, it comes back to the motivation, knowing the motivation for why we're doing those things. In my case, I thought I was an Enneagram 3 because I was doing all of the things that a 3 does. But what I learned in spending more time and reading more books, of course, uh, Enneagram 5 is really what I was. And I took the test and I'm like, oh, Enneagram 5? Really? So like an Enneagram 5 just really, really resonated with me. And that's what they would call the investigator. And you're very curious. You ask a lot of questions. You kind of are a loner, not so much big on being with people, but you love to talk about ideas. You're an obsessive learner. You're like that little kid in the corner that's got their head buried in a book. You know, and that was me growing up. And so really figuring that out and realizing that it all came down to motivation and picking up on 
the motivations, like why was I doing what I was doing? And so when we can distinguish that, it will help us, I think, especially as we get older, understanding the motivations, why we do things and understanding more about ourselves as we get older, picking up wisdom, being able to read more books, more personal development. All of this culminates in a beautiful aging process. And when we get to that place, when we look back on our lives, are we going to care how many wrinkles we have? I doubt it. I don't think I'm going to care at 65. If I've lived an amazing life up to that point and I have intentionally chosen how to live my life, what I have chosen to put in my mind, put in my body, what I have done with my body, how I have spent my time, I think I will look back and say, if I got an extra wrinkle or two, that's totally fine. You know, let's let's talk about what really matters. And it's not about how we look. It's not about this obsession in our culture with, you know, staying young forever. It is about picking up wisdom. <laughs> and that's what I'm excited about. Like when you people ask me, like, oh, Mindy, you're saying that now because you're only 35. And I'm like, you know what? I think I'm still going to be saying this at 40, at 45, because every single year, yeah, there are certain things in my body that don't work the same as they did when I was 20. It takes a little longer to recover from workouts. You know, I got to pull a hamstring here and again. You know, there are certain things that we have to work around and we have to be a bit more intentional as we get older to protect ourselves, of course, and our keep track, make sure our bodies are working appropriately. But then again, the flip side of that is the wisdom that you get. The relationships that you have built, you know, when you have time, when you get to be like, in my case, I have a partner who I love so very much. And it's like we've spent more than 10 years together, lots of ups and downs. You probably if you listen to all of the podcast episodes, you know a little bit about that. And it's been a wild ride. But I am so grateful because as I get older, I'm like, I get to build a history with this other human. We have beautiful kids together and I get to watch them grow up. So why am I worried about You know, do I weigh five pounds too much? Do I have stretch marks in the wrong areas? Do I got a little bit of, you know, fat where it shouldn't be? You know, these types of things can all melt away because it doesn't really matter in the big scheme of things. What matters is that I leave a legacy for my family, that I take care of them, that I am there for them, that I am present, that I do embrace the beauty of getting older. So I'm curious what you think. I know I kind of went on a few different tangents today with just getting older and what it's been like for me, but I would love to hear about your thoughts. Like, do you love getting older? Or are you saying, Mindy, just wait, just wait, Mindy, just wait till you're 40, wait till you're 45, wait till you hit menopause, you know, or is it going to be awesome? I've talked to people on all ends of the spectrum. There was one friend on a side note uh, who came here, business buddy, uh, came to the island and amazing like she, i think she's like 65 or thereabouts if i hopefully i'm getting the age correct um she came she was so freaking body confident and so like she was incredibly fit so vibrant still wanting to learn very much like we had a lot to talk about um, very much like me in a lot of ways and it was incredible to see i'm like i looked at her i'm like you are my hero like That's what I'm shooting for at 65. I want to be just as excited about life as I am right now. And you are showing me that it is possible. And that's really darn cool. So I'm curious. Do you love getting older? Are there things you like or hate about it? Are there things I should be aware of? (laughs) You're like, Mindy, well, if you only knew this. Um, And is there something you like more about yourself than you did like about yourself five years ago? Like how far have you come? Sometimes we just have to look back in time and that can be a kind of a fun practice too. For those of you who journal uh, or for those of you, some people I, I know like I make videos. So it's funny because I, I look at my YouTube channel from, you know, 10 years ago. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I look like that. I was talking like that. I had no idea. Like I'm so glad to be on this end of it now. So is there something like that that you can look back and say, wow, I have really done X that I'm really proud of in the last five years. And what does your self-care practice look like to help you take care of your well-being as you grow older? Sometimes that is something we forget or don't pay attention to, or we just kind of stick with what we've always done, and then it stops working for us. So I think as we get older, it's really important to pay attention to things that are nourishing for us. Like I've changed my morning routine a bunch of times over the years and how I start my mornings now is very different from when I was 20. When I was 20, I was like going to the gym at like five in the morning, like I was 4.50 thereabouts. I'm like waiting for the gym to open. 
yeah, it's a crazy person. And now it looks a lot different. Like I, I have a leisure start to my mornings. I get up at 5.30. I do a mobility routine for 15, 20, 30 minutes, you know, and I kind of ease into my day. So thinking about what our bodies need at whatever stage you're in and pay attention to the signs as you see them. Like don't ignore your body, but also don't obsess if things are not perfect or working exactly like you hoped. It's really having that grace and understanding and the wisdom. Like as we get older, we have more wisdom. So capitalize on that. So DM me on Instagram if you want to share your perspective on getting older, what that's like for you, things that I could be aware of. So as I am gaining in this wisdom, you can share yours with me. That would be awesome. I love to hear people's life wisdom and their stories. I'm also on TikTok kind of at Mango Effect Podcast, but definitely much more on Instagram at Mango Effect Podcast. So let's encourage and inspire each other this week. And if you like what you hear, please subscribe to the Mango Effect Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss an episode. I release an episode every single week. So I would be absolutely thrilled if you could write a five-star review if you love the show. We are a new show, and so many of you are starting to leave reviews and letting me know, which is awesome. So I'm so glad it's been helpful for you. The more reviews and subscribes we get will definitely help us as we grow. So thank you so much for your time today and for listening to me talk about how we are getting older together. All right, so I will talk with you in the next episode. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye for now.